Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back. This is episode four of my Luminar 4 tutorial series. You can check out the entire series at that playlist there. And by the way, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. I would love for you to just hit the subscribe button down below and the bell to get notifications when I post a new video, which is pretty frequently. This is episode four, as I said, of my tutorial series for the new product Luminar 4 by Skyloom. And I'm gonna have at least 10 videos in this series, not to mention all the other videos I'll do around workflow and things like that. Um, in this video, we're gonna be covering the canvas tools. So that's crop and rotate, that's erase, clone and stamp, and lens and geometry. These were known as tools in the previous version, but are now known as canvas tools. Let's take a look at them. Here's a photo. If you're over here on one of these filter or um, adjustment tabs where you can get to the different, uh, what's now called tools, um, you go up here, and if you see this little icon, it looks like a pencil with a, uh, a ruler next to it. If you click on that, that is Canvas Tools, and one click, that'll take you over. And here they are, Crop and Rotate, Erase, Clone and Stamp, and Lens and Geometry. We'll just go through these in order, and to be clear, I'm not deep diving on every single aspect of all four of these, because that would make it this video very long. This is a high-level overview. I will give you some insights and tips and tricks as we go. Uh, but I do plan to come back with a deeper dive on each. Uh, crop and Rotate is also available up here. So if you're in the editing uh, module over here on one of these uh, tools tabs using different filters to adjust your photo and need to crop or rotate, you can get a quick access to it there. But if you want Crop and Rotate, one click and you're in the tool, and here you go. So you can choose different aspect ratios, one click and it applies it to your photo. This angle uh, here with the degrees has a little uh, slider and you can just use that to uh, adjust the angle and that's basically how to straighten your photo. By the way, if you hover your cursor over here just outside the frame, you can see a little kind of semicircular shape with an arrow on either side. That also allows you to make adjustments. So you can do it either way and if for some reason you decide you don't like it, hit reset and you're back to zero. Now, this icon here is the overlay for the rule of thirds. You can see the grid there. And this icon is the overlay for the golden ratio. So depending on whether you like rule of thirds or golden ratio to help sort of guide your cropping, that sort of thing, you can use either one. And then these icons here, in order, this allows you to flip the photo left to right. As it says, as you hover, flip horizontal, one click, and it's been flipped horizontal, one click, and it goes back. This next one will allow you to flip it vertically. So I'll do that, one flip, it's upside down, probably not gonna work here. This is not Stranger Things. So I'm gonna flip it back and there we go. And this icon here allows you to rotate left, right? So each time you click it, it will rotate it left until you get all the way back around. I'm not gonna do that. And as I said, if you ever feel like you need to, you can just hit reset and you're back to normal. And once you have your adjustments set the way you want, just click done and it will take you back into the Canvas Tools menu. Okay, next up is Eraser. One click on that and you'll enter the Eraser mode. And here all you do, you'll have a, uh, a mouse, or excuse me, you'll have a cursor. I'll put it here on this door so you can see it a little bit better. I realize the background of this photo probably doesn't play well with seeing this tiny cursor. Um, but that, if you hit the right bracket key, you can make it larger, uh, as you can see there, or left bracket key will make it smaller. I'm using a Mac. I don't know if that's the same on Windows but I'm sure you do if you use Windows. Um, you can also subtract or lasso things. Again, I'll get into more detail later, but once you have the size of your cursor set, I'm gonna go one smaller, you can just paint over. I'm gonna, let's say, paint over that spot, um, and I'm gonna say paint over this leaf, and I'm just gonna erase them both. Once you have the things highlighted that you want to erase, just click on the Erase button, give it a moment, and it removes them. There you go. That is uh, done and dusted, as they say. So I've erased a leaf and a spot on the wall, and I'm happy with it. I say done, and I'm back into Canvas Tools. Okay, next up is Clone and Stamp. So one click, and you are over in the Clone and Stamp tool. Now the difference between Erase and Clone and Stamp is this. Erase, as you mouse over something, it's making a best guess as to what it should replace it with. It usually does a really good job, especially in something like this where it's fairly busy. It has a lot of uh, choices to choose from texture-wise and that sort of thing. And as you saw in the previous example, did a fine job of erasing the things that I wanted it to erase. But again, it's making a best guess. Clone and Stamp is different. Clone and Stamp, you're telling it what to choose. It is effectively a cut and paste. You're saying, 
I'm gonna cut this. Now cut's not the right word. You're gonna copy. You're not cutting it out of the photo. You're gonna copy uh, this, whatever this is, and paste it over here. So here's how you do it. It says click to set source. So let's see here. Uh, let's say I have this little bit of concrete and I have this leaf here and I wanna cover up that leaf, right? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click once. And once you do that, you're setting the source. You can then come over here and again, I'm gonna left bracket key. Once you set the source, you can uh, increase or decrease the size of the, the brush, if you will. So I've set that source and now I'm gonna hold my mouse down and I'm just gonna go over that leaf. And as you can see, it just removed that leaf. As you can see, it's moving around. Now, if you wanna change the source, what you do is you hold down the option key, find the spot, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna grab this spot here. I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna come over here and now paint on top of that leaf. And I'm gonna use that same source to paint on top of that leaf, and that leaf, and that leaf. The only thing you have to be careful about is your source moves. And so as you're continuing to move this way, um, if you run from, uh, let's say, concrete into grass, you're gonna start painting grass. So I recommend you pay close attention, and more importantly, I recommend that you use small strokes, kinda go back and forth, and then every now and then go back and reset the, the point that you're copying from. But that's effectively how Clone and Stamp works, allowing you to cut or copy, really, certain aspects of the image and move them to cover up something in another aspect or another piece of the image. And then once you're finished, you just say done, and it'll take you back to the canvas tools. Okay, and the last section is lens and geometry. So one click and you'll see you have quite a few options here. And again, it, it would take a while to go through all of these in detail. I'll show you some quick examples. Auto distortion correction, this shows up on a raw file. This is a raw file, as you can see there. Auto distortion correction, we'll make a best guess at um, correcting the verticals and the, and the lines in your photo. I think it did a pretty good job there. It's not perfect, but that's okay. If you have chromatic aberration or defringing, you can click, those are just tick boxes. You can just click and it will make those adjustments as well. Lens distortion allows you to overcome uh, pincushion or barrel distortion that can occur based on the type of lens that you're using. And so I just did some adjustments there and I might pull that back a little bit, but the point is, as you can see, you can go from you know one to the other and make quite an impact on the look of your photo. Uh, let's say I'll just leave it there for now. You've got devignetting, and that allows you, if you've got um, a, a heavy vignette, like I've shot it before where I have a, like a 10-stop filter, and certain settings, I might get a little bit of a vignette around. The devignetting will basically brighten those edges of the photo to sort of get rid of that I don't really have any vignetting here, so you're not gonna see it in this photo. Um, and then this bottom section is where you get into the customization of what kind of auto distortion correction did. You can take it further, or you can just use these um, sliders down below to make adjustments to your photo. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, let me show you an example of how these works. Vertic uh, work. Vertical, you can see that I can tilt this on the vertical axis. So let's say you wanna straighten that up a little bit. Uh, maybe I want to go like that. Okay, that's a little bit of an improvement. Horizontal does the same thing, but left to right. So you can turn the photo a little bit. Uh, let's say you're slightly off center. Um, I, I'm trying to correct for that. I'm going to go back maybe a little bit that way to get a little bit more centered with my photo. Rotate, as the name implies, is just like in the crop tool. I don't need to do that here. Uh, aspect will actually, let me just show you. It's gonna change the aspect ratio of your photo. And uh, let me show you that. As you get further down, you're gonna end up with some dead space if you're not careful. And that what that means is you will have to then, if you stay like that, come back and crop out those gray areas that are above and below the image. I don't need aspect change here, but I wanted to show you. Scale will actually effectively zoom in or zoom out, right? So you can see how that operates, but maybe you wanted to zoom in a little bit and tighten that uh, composition up. You can do that with scale. And then X offset and Y offset. Let me just show you how that works. X is offset is just gonna slide it left or right, the opposite of the way you're sliding it on the, uh, on the slider. So as I slide it to the left, the image is going to the right. And as I slide it to the right, the image is going to the left. 
Next, that is X offset. You can just double click these to reset. And then Y offset does the same, but up and down. So as I drag it to the right, it's lifting the photo up. And as I drag it to the left, it's lifting uh, or pushing the photo down. In either case, it allows you to effectively tighten up your composition and get a little bit better view of things. I think I've got a better looking photo here. Let me show you the before. That's before I did any of these corrections and that's after. Now it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was. It allows you to compensate for screwed up verticals basically. And it's a very powerful tool. And that is lens and geometry. And in total, that uh, those four are the canvas tools. Crop and erase, uh, excuse me, crop and uh, rotate, erase, clone and stamp, and lens and geometry. Very powerful. They're over here on canvas tools right there. And uh, from any editing window, you can just go click up here on canvas tools to get to them. Or in this case, I used canvas tools first. I can now go in over here and make some editing adjustments to the photo, which I dire, I'm in dire need of in this case, because there's a lot of things I could fix in this photo. And I'm gonna go do that right now. I wanted to show you how canvas tools work. As I said, I'll come back and do more in-depth tutorials on all four of these, but I just wanted to give you an update and uh, some insight into how they work. And that's episode four of my Luminar 4 tutorial series. Please share, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think about this stuff. And I'll be back really soon with episode five. So thank you for watching, my friends. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. Have fun with Luminar 4. I'll see you later. And adios.